Well, what would it mean to you as many of this group sign off for the season to end the season on a win and have everybody with a smile on their face? Well, I think it's very important, Andy. I think, you know, you only get one opportunity to play your final game in front of your home supporters. And um, I think these supporters have had a toughest year, tough, toughest football season for many a time. So it would be good to reward them with a, a similar performance to Birmingham, in all honesty. But we have a goal or two to add to it. I think it's a long time since they've seen a goal in Rotherham Colours. Um, a meaningful goal as well to win a game. And of course, it's the last day where the, we as players and staff get the opportunity to go around at the end and, and thank the supporters for those that, that stay in and, and, uh, and show their appreciation. But it's more important we do to them. Um, I know you've discussed a lot about forthcoming meetings and big changes. What more do you need to know? What more might you be able to learn from certain players from this final match of the season? Well, I think in football, every, every game you get an opportunity to, to impress, don't you? You get an opportunity, especially when it's new people that's, that's going to be making some big decisions. So we're, the, we're, we're well known to the Royal United supporters, but we're not so well known to the playing staff, of course. We're known at a distance and not in the trenches with them. So everyone gets an opportunity to impress on the last day. Everyone gets an opportunity to impress in a couple of days training ahead of that game. So... Um, a lot of decisions that you rightfully would know that I've already taken and noted down and discussed tentatively with the um, with the chairman and we've gone through some things with Rob again too as meeting with Rob this morning so we're, we're planning is is way ahead where where time scales would suggest but you know if we plan to fail then we'll fail to plan and uh, you know that little wording whatever way comes across it's true so we we will plan meticulously and we'll will be good to go next week. But until then, players get a final opportunity to say, I should be playing a part at the New York Stadium. And who wouldn't want to play a part here? Um, does Victor Johansson get his, you know, final swan song, as it were, <laughs> after he's been to the pub and bought all those beers to yeah. to play and say goodbye to the fans? Well, I, I think I'm a fan. I think if he's, Victor's putting money behind the bar, I'll be there myself. Your free beers. I think you'll probably be there, Gid. You've never been known to buy a drink. So, um... Yeah, listen, Victor is. Yeah, it's a big, it's a big accusation that. Um, no, I think that um, Victor's been a wonderful, wonderful uh, goalkeeper for the football club. Everyone's aware of the huge interest, huge interest. I'm aware of it because I'm getting phone calls from managers who want to give my opinion, if like they want to take my opinion on them behind the scenes. They don't ask my opinion what he's like between the sticks to see it. So, so Victor will. I'll have a chat with him today. See what he is. I've not seen him today. But we're about to go and train. I'll have a chat with him and we'll see where it all lies. But, um, you know, with his this season, with his next season remains to be seen. But at the minute, I'm planning with him because he's not gone anywhere yet. Mm. Uh, sorry I paused then. I was just thinking about going to the pub on Saturday <laughs> uh, or not. Um, so in terms of health and fitness rather than availability, uh, who might be involved in the match day squad that perhaps wasn't at Bristol? There's one or two that, that are fighting to be there. Whether we can get them on the grass for two consecutive days leading up to that, obviously, former Cardiff player Sean Morrison, of course, comes into consideration if, if the big man can, can get there. Shane Ferguson is, we're hoping to have him on the grass today and tomorrow. And, and it's all about reaction, Andy. We'll get them on the grass for sure today. I know they're training, but it'll be a bit reaction. Do they come through the full training session? Do they come through and say they've had no other effects, not only after training but tomorrow morning when it's all cooled down the body goes back to normal uh, other than that it'll be very much what what we've had you know we've been the the injuries um that we've got when you look up at the board is is never nice to look at but we are where we are and um so from our point of view we lose one or two but we'll focus on the on the 11 stroke 14 15 players to come out the pitch on saturday we'll focus on them and trying to beat a card of side who could who could finish in the comfortably in the top 10 with a win here so we know that they will be aiming to do that under a manager who's transformed them as a team because um earlier in the season they, they didn't know where they were but uh, they've been they've been wonderful in the last couple of months so we know how to this will be your toughest game in my opinion so, uh, the three games that we've that we've played when since i've come in with regard to the challenge then that awaits. Uh, I noticed in the, the last time you spoke to us, you were talking about how um, it was 
the challenge was substantially bigger than perhaps you'd thought it was might or told, etc. Does that suggest a greater overhaul of the playing squad than maybe you would have assumed when you signed on the line? Yeah, I don't know if it's, I don't know if it's an overhaul. There's a number of players that you're aware of contract. There's a number of players that have options, you know, to, to stay or go. Um, I'll have to reflect on what it, what it would need to challenge at the top end of League One. And um, so there, there will be an overhaul to a degree. Um, but I think in fairness to chairman of the board, I need to sit down and make sure I've, I've finalised that whole analysis, if you like. It's both on the pitch and off it, things we, we want to change. And, and I have to make sure that, that my chairman is comfortable with the changes we're looking to reflect on. That includes in the playing squad. And there is there is one or two that will play on Saturday that we're almost thinking, do we do we keep them in the door? Do we do we let them move on to something new for them? Um, and these are discussions that will will go right up until the referee blows the final whistle on Saturday. And uh, and when he does, then we, as I said to you earlier, we'll we really go to what then? There, there almost seems this kind of uh, itching to get started, waiting for green lights kind of scenario here. You know, the, 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 the football side of things is, is pretty much done, but, you know, get that green light and that's when it really kind of starts moving. Yeah, listen, I'd be... I'd be... I'm not going to start my relationship with, with telling lies to our supporters. I already know what the resources are for the next season. I know where our budget's going. I know the type of players I want to, I want to bring in. I know the type of players and those players that we want to keep, largely, by the odd exception. Um, as I said, next, next season in League One will be really tough. Not only the clubs coming up who are well-resourced, like you know your Wrexhams, your Stockports, your Mansfield, well-resourced. The teams that will be getting relegated alongside ourselves will be strong. And of course, you're leaving probably seven or eight clubs back in League One after the playoff final that that will be at the top end, whatever happens here. So we have to make sure that we're really competitive and strong. But the one thing I learned to Stephen is I learned lots about over the course of the 46 games, what's what's needed again. And, and of course, normally when I'm in this league, I have a reputation for doing very well. So we will do very well. But we need a lot of things to fall in our favour, like do we get the one or two signings that we really want to get in the building? Do we get a run of the ball? Do we get a penalty when we should get one? Do we get one against us like the one that was given last week at Bristol, which is never a penalty, so skipping a jump. And um, so from that point of view, there's a lot of factors. But over the course of the 46 games, you do believe it levels out. And we do believe that we'll be in contention, but there is so much work to be done. It's, it's, there's not going to be many days off for, for myself and Paul, that's for sure. Best of luck. Thank, Thank you, Andy. Cheers. Hey, Steve. Hello, Paul. Uh, just, just on, on the Victor thing. I mean, like your your bond with the fans is is renowned, and yeah. when you get like a play that kind of bond as well, that's just exactly what you're looking for, isn't it? That's how, that's how you build a team. I mean, you get a town behind you. Yeah. Listen, they they, they have bonds with with players or management or whatever it is because they recognise what they do, and they recognise how hard and how much they fight for their football club. And Victor Johansson, whether I was the Miller's manager or not, is a is a top class talent. I've sat in the stands and you've seen me come to games and he's he's been wonderful. Um only last week he makes an out unbelievable save against Birmingham the last couple of minutes when it looks odds on the boys gonna score. Um more importantly, Victor's a real, real good guy off the pitch. He's really professional, he's really humble, which which is sometimes a little bit different from what you find in players in the championship that have got aspirations, you're really humble. And um, if if any club triggers the clause and Victor is allowed to speak to him and wants to move on, he will go on a personal basis. My best wishes. I think you should aspire to play as high as you can. So we'd send him away. But it's it's not a foregone conclusion yet because phoning up myself and asking my opinion on him and phoning up Rob Scott or indeed speaking to Paul Douglas or even our chairman, um, speaking doesn't mean that you, you're going to part with a lot of money to buy a player. So... We still have to wait and see if that gets triggered, of course. Yeah. Uh, were you tempted at all to play Dylan on Saturday? Have another look at him, or would you not risk the fans lynching? <laughs> <laughs> yeah, yeah. Yeah, I think, I think sometimes, you, sometimes you've got a difficult decision to make because when you, when I like sitting down last week with Victor, he understood completely that I had to, had to look at Dylan. Um, uh, of course, Victor is of the opinion as well that he's, this would be a life changing move for him. So he's, He's involved in lots of talks with his representatives and sometimes that maybe take your focus away a little bit. So, but listen, if, if we play Victor or Dylan, whoever plays, we, 
People forget that Dylan Phillips, I know he played early in the season for Mills and didn't have his best game by his own admission, didn't have his best game. I thought he was very good at, you know, all by the odd one or two early door kicks. He was very good at Bristol City. And people shouldn't forget that three years ago, he was the top goalkeeper in League One. So he is a very competent young man, but we'll decide on tomorrow which was going to be the goalkeeper for uh, for Saturday. Okay. Uh, just how important, how useful have these this fortnight before the end of the season been to you in this, you know, Listen, finding the way forward? Ab- absolutely valuable. That's why Tony Stewart's got lots of money and I've got very little. He makes really good decisions. <laughs> and um, one, of the, one of the criteria is when, when the chairman offered me the job, he, he made it clear he wanted me to come now. He would have, in his words, never cut across the evening. We'd been fighting for a prize in League One, but that that ended uh, and he thought it was invaluable like I did when I come first time around I come in early probably a few more games to assess and look and uh, the added difficulty we've had this t- this time is that the team was already re- the club was relegated so uh, but it was important that I looked at the playing squad it was important to assess them not only on the pitch but for characters it was important to assess the, f- the infrastructure and the facilities and, and and really make sure the whole overall of the of the training ground etc is ultimately comes under my remit but there's some good people there that Dave fellows and his team so we will be invaluable and we will be ready to go Paul when we report for pre-season 